Itamai Bandai asked the question, you mentioned you're not there because kids are going to school. Not currently in the Philippines, it means. Uh, I was thinking of moving there with my daughter, his first year of college, and my son is 11 years old. In your opinion, is this a good idea? You need to decide what education you want your kids to have, whether it's an international school, a local private school, or the free public school. Now, one of the problems you might have is if they went to a public school and then decided to go to a private high school or a private college, they may struggle to get in because they didn't go to a good school before they went to apply for a good college. Um, so be aware of that. It's, it's the same in the West. You know, you've got to go to the right school to go to the right college, etc. From a cultural point of view, it'll be good for the kids because if you've got Fil Filipino Americans, then they're going to be in touch with their culture a lot more uh, by spending a bit of time in the Philippines. But looking at the education system itself, you've got more than one option here. There is homeschooling. You can get things, I mean, you could probably do the same with the US education because you can do it with the UK. You can do the stuff online, you know, with doing it. Um, remotely so you could actually prompt uh, prop up their education um, because you gotta remember where do you kids plan on being after you retired or whatever and they finish school are they going to stay in the Philippines or are they going to look to go back to the West that's that's something where setting the table of where they need to be education wise because there's no point going back to the west if their education is only good enough for them to work in mcdonald's um you want an education that's actually going to put them ahead which is why it's worth looking at all the options first then you've got the cost because the public schools are free private schools vary from anything from two thousand pesos up to fifty thousand pesos a month depending on the school itself so you have a whole array of things to look at and the output I mean if you look at the nursing for example where people actually pay privately to become a nurse to then go and work abroad where they have to retrain and do exams so they can actually do the job that they had already trained for on a course that should only last about one to two years that's been extended to four years for extra money then you have to look at things like that when say well is the education up to what I would call an acceptable standard now, my perspective on education is a little bit different because I'm very uh, lead by example. You know, a bit like hiring carpenters. You know, you hire a carpenter, it doesn't matter what they've got on paper. It, what matters is what they've got here and their ability with their hands. So you put them on a trial for a few days and see if they can do it. Now, a lot of the West doesn't work like that. They love certificates for everything and I'll be honest with you I'm probably one of the employers that doesn't value any certificates I look for experience and knowledge but I'm few and far between so you need to look at what do you want as the output do you want your kids to be able to go to the West and become a rocket scientist or do you want them to go to the West and say right we don't recognize any qualifications and you're gonna to have to retrain if you want to do anything so you need to weigh those things up from getting on with the local kids I don't think it's any issue and I know some people have had problems previously um, but I'm not sure their family set up because you normally find your own niche anyway you know kids take time to adapt I've had the same in Spain but people complain how bad the schools are and how horrible things are and I wonder what they're like because my kids love the schools in Spain. The, you know, they're very, very good schools. Um, the education's there, the security's there. I mean, the I'll do a video on that. I've actually got some footage and stuff from outside. You're not allowed video inside the schools. But the, I just want to say the schools in Spain are great. You know, although a lot of people will run them down. I'm not sure why. Um, because I find that the education's fine. Philippines, all the classes are in English except for one subject, which is the Philippine class that 
everybody has to do. I think it's compulsory. So you're class-wise, you're going to be taught in English, and you have to look at exams because I've heard that exams can be in English or Tagalog, or some will be in English and some will be in Tagalog. So you need to find somebody in the school to actually tell you which is which and if it's subject related or whatever. But the, the classes are generally taught in English and the English teacher will no doubt have worse English than your kids. So maybe you can actually help the teacher. Um, I know a friend of mine, Ray, his, his uh, daughter, is it his daughter? I think it's his... I think it's a niece, but she actually corrects the English teacher uh, because she'll go and ask him and then he'll correct it and then she'll go back the following day and actually say, well, that was actually, this, this is what you should actually be saying. So there's those sort of things to be looking at. Now, the other thing to look at is where you're going to live because where you live will actually let you know how far your college and stuff is, how far the schools are, what's the commute like. Um, also, getting on the list, because some kids end up doing night schools because the school's over capacity during the day. So there's lots of things to look at before leaping. First, what I would recommend, look at the schools you're interested in. First, first thing I do is ask around, ask the people in the area, where do your kids go? What education they get? Blah, blah, blah. Then look at the outputs from it. Look at, do these kids go on and, you know, for um, a better future? Or is it throwing money at a school that says it's great and it's absolutely terrible? Because um, there is some good schools in the Philippines. I mean, the, for example, if your kids become legal professionals, um, there's certain schools that specialize in that, which I am. I'd recommend if you were becoming a lawyer. Now, the other point relating to my kids in Europe is passports. Your kids already have dual citizenship. So you're already one step ahead of the average Filipino anyway, because they can always go back to the West if they want to. They've already got the door open. So you could actually look at where you, you want your kids to go. Um, if you want them to study for their main subjects for prior to a career, then maybe they do the uh, local education in the Philippines, then take a master's or whatever in, in the US, where they're going to come out with something that's actually recognized. But, like I said, there's always the possibility of online study as well, because I prefer online study, because I can still work, I can still do other stuff, and still um, do things a lot faster than most people and, um, do these courses there. Cause a lot of these courses are based on like 10 to 12 hours so when I do something I'll I'll clock up a Saturday and a Sunday and do maybe 16 hours over the weekend and then during the week I'll do two hours a night so you can whip through doing a lot of courses um, at a higher level especially if they're uh, based on uh, what do you call it modules if it's modular based it's absolute doddle so that's what I think. I mean, would I take my kids back to the Philippines if they had their papers now, you know, if they were passported? Uh, the answer is no. They'll still be in Spain until they finish here. Why? Because my kids are already partially fluent in Spanish. My son's already conversational Spanish within a year. April's already pretty good with Spanish. Another important thing with the Spanish is Bisaya has a lot of words that are the same in Spanish or very similar. So picking up the Spanish language is very easy for Filipinos from Visaya and the Visayas region. So they'll still be here, but it's very like we'll move on to Germany or France once the kids are fluent in um, Spanish and to a, a level that they're happy because I want them to pick up more languages. Uh, for a long term future so yeah I mean I, I'm very focused on the kids education and yes there may be problems with the moving you know uh, changing the system or whatever but I could move up near the French border you know that's the thing with Spain it does border on France 
going off tangent again. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I say. But for me, I'd recommend a education at college level or older kids outside of the Philippines because it's not just the education itself, but it's also the the drive, the ethics, the pushing. Um, the culture is very different in the Philippines and it's not as aggressive as the West which is good and bad you know you want kids to drive themselves and not just assume anything they're told is fact because it's somebody older than them um, but at the same time the Philippines sort of sucks that out but most schools do you know I'm very aggressive on getting my kids to think and be creative etc because a lot of time the school systems regardless are built for conformity not for education anyway thanks for watching